but let's stand and reverence the word of the Lord together tonight. Exodus 32, 1 through 8, and then we will look at verses 25 through 26. And when you have found it, would you shout with a loud voice, I'm ready for the word. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt, we what not, or we do not know, what is become of him? And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all of the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down, for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made a molten calf and have worshiped it and sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Verse 25, And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. I want to preach to you tonight from the 26th verse in the form of this question. Who's on the Lord's side? Would you look at your neighbor and say, hey neighbor, tonight the question is, who's on the Lord's side? Seated in the presence of the Lord, who's on the Lord's side? My objective tonight, my assignment, it is to draw a line in the sand between God's side and the world's side. And it is in hope that at the end of this prophetic word that we have strengthened our resolve to do it God's way. Somebody shout that back, I want to do it God's way. During the savage violence of the Civil War, a preacher from the North told President Lincoln that he hoped the Lord is on our side. And Lincoln replied, I know the Lord is always on the side of the right, but it is my constant anxiety and prayer that I and this nation should be on the Lord's side. One of the things that I have noticed, one of the things that seem to plague 
Christians the most, it is the idea of standing against the mainstream when it comes to the area of our faith. And I can't tell you how many times I have heard people express their frustration when it comes to uh, trying to convince an unsaved man or woman about trusting in a God that they can't see. Trusting in a God that they can't see to do the impossible. And even when unbelievers realize that this God has probably helped them out a time or two, without the wooing power of the Holy Ghost, they aren't able to make a firm commitment to turn their lives over to them, over to him. And this is a fact that we must come to grips with, that most unsaved people cannot grasp the concept of a God who loves them unconditionally and desires to change their lives. Even as I was thinking, as I was studying, I began to think about when I was a young lady growing up, as the bishop said, in the church of God in Christ. And the saints knew that although I was in the church, I wasn't in God. I'm not going to mess with you. So you can be in the church <laughs> and God not be in you. Yeah, you can shout, you can dance, you can turn cartwheels up here and still not have the authentic presence of a holy God on the inside of you. And they would ask me from time to time, Elder Claude, they would say, when are you going to get saved? And I would say to them, I was, I, I was, I was, I was, um, I, I, I was, I was kind of sharp with my tongue. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't have a bridled tongue. I would kind of say respectfully, but I would just let you know what was on my mind. And uh, I, I said to them, I'm going to get saved when I'm ready to get saved. That, that was my response, not knowing that I can't draw myself. Mm -hmm. I'm going somewhere. But it is, it, is, it is the wooing power of the Holy Ghost that draws you out of the bondage and the grip of sin. And, and so we, we are having a hard time when it comes to trying to get the unsaved to believe in God. But I didn't come tonight to talk about the unsaved. I came to talk about corrupt Christians. I came tonight not to talk about those who don't know the way. I came tonight to talk about corrupt Christians. And when I began to use that word corrupt, that word sounds strong. And some of you strong and some of you want me. I felt you in the spirit. I felt you in the spirit. But but this word corrupt this simply means simply change from what is it changed from what is solid. And do something that is putrid, something and decaying, and decaying. It speaks of something speaks that was once whole and way whole and way but isn't any longer but because isn't any it longer began, because it had to be gay and rock and rock. And this is what we see, the people this of God, and we exited us the 30th and chapter and the 7th and the 7th and the 7th. When God says to Moses, when God says, Get me down. Get thee for thy people, for thy which thou broughtest out of Egypt, out of Egypt, have corrupted have themselves. themselves. They started out good. They started out somewhere in the process of their process of their faith. They went back to what they was familiar. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. That, that's, that's what corrupt that's Christianity is about. We, we start out well, we start but somewhere between the confession and the profession of our faith, 
find ourselves in a bind in the condition of accident, and we began to decay. We began to decay. I know it don't look like it because you have no time. Look like it because you have time. But I didn't come to preach to your title. I didn't come to preach to your title. Because men, my title was men on YouTube and on Google and the internet. And they bought a license to that. So I'm not as the old people. So I'm not as the old people say, I'm not stepping about to come to preach to your to your preach to your mom, to your and to what people see and what people want to for you are I pay for you are tonight to get into the depths of your soul. Depths of our soul. Place that you have the place that you have the place that, place that he builds your inside from your outside. And I came to talk and I came to talk to put on the sound of my voice. It's not that Christianity, not that Christianity is flawed. It's flawed. That we are flawed. God that help we me. are flawed. God we help need me. this time. We need the this time God. in the presence of in God. In this text, in this text, we find the Israelites, we find the Israelites who have been in for 430 years, 430 years in Egypt. And in this time, they have, in this time, they have a, a loss in their God of their fathers. If you know anything about the Israelites in Egypt, you know that they were, they were beaten and oppressed. They were ordered uh, to kill their male child as soon as he was born. And when the people could no longer endure the suffering, God raised up Moses and Aaron to confront Pharaoh and deliver them out of the bondage and usher them into the promised land. When Moses approached Pharaoh, he is demanding that he let the people go. And Pharaoh responded in Exodus 5 and 2 by saying, who is the Lord? That I should obey his voice to let Israel go. I know not the Lord, neither will I let them go. And thus began the challenge, people of God, to show whose God was more powerful. Mm. So God begins to send plagues to Pharaoh's house and Egypt. He sends the plague of turning the Nile into blood. He begins to send the plague and release flies and gnats. He releases boils, and even the magicians were consumed with the boils that they could not even appear and stand in Pharaoh's camp. I'm going somewhere. Uh, he sends these plagues, and eventually Pharaoh let them go, only to decide that he wanted them back. Mm. So he goes after them because they have taken the spoils from Egypt. He goes after them and God decides that enough is enough. And it is in the Red Sea that God destroys their enemy forever to prove, hallelujah, that he is the one and only true and living God. He, he, is, he is trying to prove to Israel that he is with them and he is for them. It, it's a new day for them. It's a new season. But yet they are, they are familiar with the gods of antiquity past. Ah, oh, they, they, they are familiar. And so God begins to try to prove himself to them. And he does it so much that he begins to speak to them out of a smoking, blazing mountain that caused the mountain to quake. The people were terrified because they begin to hear the voice of God for themselves. They, they, they were at a distance at a mountain, but they saw the lightning and they heard the thunder. They saw the smoke that began to rise from the mountain and they heard 
heard the sound of the trumpet that came from God. It was so, it was so overwhelming that they said to Moses, listen, you go and talk to God for us. <laughs> uh, but we don't want to talk to him one on one. They said, speak to him on our behalf or else we will die. So Moses in this text, he does what any good leader would do. He goes to talk to God on the behalf of the people. And he leaves his assistant Aaron who is a weak man, mm. he leaves him in charge of the people. I'm going somewhere. Just, just hang with me tonight. Uh, uh, everything is okay for a while. But the hours turn into a day. And the day turns into 40 days and 40 nights. And now anxiety and uncertainty begins to set in. And I can hear somebody in the camp uh, saying, Moses should have never gone up to that mountain. Mm. Somebody began to complain and say, hey, I had a bad feeling about this anyway. Somebody said, I bet you anything that Moses is lost or he's dead. And then somebody else said, whether he is dead or not, if he was planning to come back, he should have been back by now. Mm. The, the people that, that God has brought out of bondage and the people that God is taking into a promised future, they are trying to figure out how the one and only true and living God works. And they are weary because their leader is MIA. But it's not because of negligence, Bishop. It, it is because he was willing to consecrate himself mm. and spend time with God. No, oh, I, I, I want to say that again. I, I said leaders should be just as Moses, just as our bishop has done by calling this time of consecration. It is a time of intentionally pulling up to God's table and spending time with him. And can I tell you tonight, that's why we should be thankful for godly leadership. I got three amens and a few hand claps. No, 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 no. I said, I said we should be grateful and thankful, not for bootleg leaders, glory to God, not for people who lead you in church, but they can't lead you beyond the four walls. Come talk to me. We should be grateful for godly leadership men and women of God who will steal away to seek his face, are uh, leaders who endure the pressure and the strain to cover you, those who endure the warfare, ah, to, to try to get a word from God for your life when they're trying to figure out theirs. God, help me now. Oh, you ain't talking back, but I'm going to preach this anyway. Uh, uh, those leaders who, who aren't perfect, but they're willing to stay in the face of God until they become more like him. Uh, uh, pastors uh, such as this man of God who fight for the same people who won't lift a finger to defend him. Mm. Y'all, y'all real quiet in this section right here. I, I said pastors and leaders who fight for the same people who won't lift a finger to defend him. The, the ones, Bishop, who, 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 whose children you christen. You visit them at the hospital. You donate money and preach their eulogy. Oh, you counsel and you marry them and then you encourage them when they divorce. Oh, you have become their personal 
emotional lending institution when they have more month than money. Mm. Oh, but let something happen to you. Mm. Let, let, let it take too long for you to answer their phone calls. God help me. Let, let it take too long for you, to, for you to send word and tell them that you're praying. Let, let it take too long for you to acknowledge what they're going through. And instead of being faithful, they will move on without the courtesy of a thank you and a goodbye. Oh, God, it's a tough church, but I'm coming for you in just a few minutes. Oh, uh, yes, you will. You'll leave and go down the street and around the corner and join another church because of church hurt. But have you considered that church hurt is not just for the people? Mm, Y'all ain't talking now. Oh, I know. Look how you're looking at me. No, 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 no. It's the leaders that go through hurt from the church. It, it's your pastor and your bishop, glory to God, that go through things that they can never tell you about because you are not mature enough to be able to cover them the way they cover you. Y'all, you don't have to help me. I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh! You have to stand there and preach and pray and prophesy and love people that you know don't like you. Love people that you know that are trying to kill you. Love people that are just waiting for something so that they can point their finger and say, I told you so. Oh, but you better cover your leaders. Y'all ain't talking to me now. You, you better cover them for they are the ones that stand watch of your soul. They are the ones that spend time with God while you out playing games and while you're in the shopping malls and, and while you have a personal lives. It's the men and women of God that lay before God, hallelujah, all day Saturday and get the word for your life and here they are now impatient because Moses at the invitation of God mm, he is on Mount Sinai I'm going to preach in just a few minutes. He, he's been there for 40 days, but he's receiving an impartation uh, straight from the mouth of God on what's required for the next place. He, he, he was giving him laws and ordinances that would set them apart from other nations. He was, he was showing Moses how he was going to bring them into a place of peace and fulfillment and he was going to give them houses that they did not build and he was going to give them vineyards that they did not plant but but it took time to hear from God for the next place oh God help me right there I said it takes time to hear from God for the next place and that's why this consecration must be taken seriously for this is the set time to lay our agendas down and and to hear from God oh, for the next place would you just open your mouth and shout Lord I want to know what's going to happen in the next place oh come on tell him Lord show me show me the next place huh and and so I'm, I'm, I'm getting to my points it, it is in this text those whom Moses had led this far they are tired of waiting on him mm. and they soon put my brother they soon put out of their mind the miraculous things that God has done. Mm, help me, Lord. In just 40 days and 40 nights, they forgot about the supernatural plagues. In, in just 40 days and 40 nights, they, they forgot that they had this Red Sea miracle. Mm. They, they forgot the manna and quail. I'm going somewhere. They, they forgot that God uh, 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 gave them water 
from the rock. And after all that God had done for them, they were convinced that he was no longer with them and decided they needed another call. Oh, they, they decided that they needed a new God. Oh, so, so they call a meeting with the assistant pastor. Mm -mm. I'm going somewhere. They, they, call, they call a meeting with, with this jelly back leader. Oh, God. They, they, they call a meeting with the assistant pastor and, and tell him, come out and make us Gods who will go before us. As for this Moses who brought us out of Egypt, we don't know what happened to him, which was a lie. Because they knew exactly where he was. God help me now. Uh, they, they knew exactly what he was doing. Uh, uh, they, they, they heard from the mount when God called him up to Mount Sinai. And it was somewhere in Exodus the 31st chapter and the 18th verse that reads, And when he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony tables of stone written with the finger of God between that verse in chapter 31 and 18 and the next chapter of 32 and 1 there was only a 24 hour time frame and if they had just waited one more day If they had just waited one more day, Moses would have been back. Ah, this sounds like the modern day church to me, where if God doesn't move quick enough, and if we're not answered the minute that we pray, we lose our patience, and the devil begins to play with your mind and give you a false sense of urgency and tell you that you been waiting on him long enough and you're going to miss your window by waiting on God oh but I came to tell you don't you listen to old Slewfoot oh because many times you are just one day away I'm trying to find 10 people in here you are just one day away from what God has promised you you are just one day away from God flipping the script you are just one day away from the breakthrough that your family needs but if you get in a hurry you will miss God somebody shout Lord don't let me miss you uh, uh, please, please hear me tonight. I, I want to talk to the mature believer right here uh, because how we handle God-ordained delays. Uh, it is the true measuring stick of our spiritual maturity. I'm going to rewind it and say it again. I said how we handle God-ordained delays. It is the true measuring stick of our spiritual maturity. I'm going to say it, and you may not like it, but we're dealing with spoiled brats in the body of Christ. God, help me to preach this. We're dealing with people that can't take nothing. You can't take nobody lying on you. You can't take no nobody talking about you you can't wait and because you are in such a hurry I want to tell you you have made a mess of your life I'm going to preach it you may not like it it's not the devil it's not demonic activity it was emotional decisions that your flesh made and now you are dealing with the aftermath of not waiting one more day God, uh, I, I, I want to talk to this. I want to talk to this impatient generation, Bishop. Uh, well, we don't have to wait. Your internet is fast. If you got Amazon Prime, it's fast. DoorDash is fast. So we no longer have to 
I wait on God. But when I was growing up, they used to sing a song. They used to say, you can't hurry God. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, they will say, you just have to wait. You, you have to trust and give him time no matter how long it takes. He's a God you can't hurry. He'll be there, don't you worry. And then they would say, he may not come when you want him. Hey. But he's right on time. How would you tell your neighbor? Tell your neighbor, that neighbor that's ready for God to do it fast in a hurry. Tell your neighbor he may not come when you want him. Oh, but tell him he's right on time. Come on, you ain't talking to the right neighbor. Tell him you better wait on God. He may not come when you pop your finger. For he is not your genie in the bottle. Oh, glory to God. He is not Santa Claus. He don't show up when you tell him to. He moves according to his own timetable. He moves according to his own will. And he may not come where you think he should come. But when he comes, he shows up with all power in his hands. Throw your head back and shout, yeah, yeah. Israel, I'm, I'm, I'm almost there. They have become impatient with God. Mm. And they want something familiar. Uh, in, in verse 2, in verse 2 through 4, And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives. Are you still here? Shout yes. Uh, break off the earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a craving tool and after he made it a molten calf and they said these be the gods which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt which brings me to my first point in the form of the question God said ask my church how many gods do you need uh, I know I'm not, I'm going to have to buy an amen in just a few minutes. How many gods do we need? Mm. It, it, is, it is recorded, my brother, that there were over 2,000 gods that Egypt served. Uh, they served the god of Ammon, which was the god of sun and air. They, they served the god of Anot, which was the goddess of fertility and sexuality, and the goddess of law, of love and war. They served Baal, which was the storm god. So in other words, they served different gods for different reasons. Oh, God, help me. Help me to keep preaching it now. Uh, they, 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 it was hard for them to be loyal to one God. Mm, because they had so many options. And God sent me to ask you, you may not say nothing to me, I may not come back, but I want to ask you while I have audience with you, God sent me to ask you, how many gods do you need? Mm, uh, it's, it's getting ready to get tight right here. We, we are not like Israel. We have not taken off the earrings from our ears. We don't have golden calves, at least I hope you don't, erected in our homes. But I want to submit to you that the church is serving multiple gods. Mm. Oh, God, thank you for the Holy Ghost now. I, I said, let me say it, because I want to say it again until your spirit hears me. I want to submit to you under the unction of the Holy Ghost and the discerning of the day and times in which we live that the church is serving multiple gods. Oh, we, we make statements like, all I need is more money and I'll be happy. 
If I could just make another 10,000 a year, I would be blessed. If I could just have a bigger house, if I could just have a bigger car, y'all ain't talking to me. If I could just wear the latest fashion of clothes. Oh, if I could just have some red bottoms. And it ain't nothing wrong with what you wear. But it becomes your car. That gave you the ability to get what you got. Oh, God, help me to preach this now. Oh, so your job and your career becomes your God. Help me, Holy Ghost, which means that you worship it. Mm. Uh, you give more time to it. Y'all ain't talking on this side. You give devotion and attention to it. Uh, we can't get you to come to Bible study. Oh, but let your job call you. You ain't talking now. You will break your neck and hire a babysitter ah, to get to your card. You ain't talking to me now. And the Lord told me to tell the church that the greatest punishment that he gave to Israel when he told them, put away your strange cards. He told them, you shall not have any other cards above me. I feel like preaching this. And so we are serving the God of power. I'm coming down your lane. We are serving this God of power. That means that we are so wonderful and we are so important. I didn't get I didn't get not even five amens right there. We are so wonderful and important and this God of power it has become abusive in our churches God help me now oh, come come that's why everybody don't need power cause you don't know what to do with it oh, you abuse people with it and it is this God of power that have abused little boys in the back of the church office it's this God of power I'm gonna preach it, that has turned our girls out. It's this God of power that's manipulated you and controlled you. And now we don't have churches, we have cults because the God of power, y'all don't want me to preach it, but I feel the Holy Ghost. The God of power, it's controlling our pulpits, and everybody want to be wonderful, and everybody want to be a star and everybody want to be number one but God told me to tell the church that every person that is operating in the God of power that he's going to expose you for the saving of your soul glory to God I know you're wonderful I know you know Creek I know you got a degree but there is no God that's more powerful than our God somebody look at your neighbor and tell him, hey neighbor, I know you got it going on, but don't believe the hype. Glory to God. Don't let people push you up. Don't let people make you their cause. Don't let people make you their savior. Don't let people put you in the place of God. Because if you let them, God will have a with you. Look at your neighbor and tell him the God of power. It must come down. God is breaking this God of power and control. God is breaking this God of manipulation. God is scattering churches that have made their pastor their God. And it's all right to honor him. It's all right to honor this gift. But you better watch it when you make Bishop Younger your God because God is a jealous God and Bishop Younger he's going to preach but it was nobody but God that saved you. Somebody open your mouth throw your head back and shout I'm pulling it down yeah The God, the God of power, that the 
is this God of fame. Am I helping you? Just as long as I'm helping one person. This God of fame. Oh, well, and, and, and I get that we're in this social media age. And I, and I get this, and I'm so conflicted. And I would love to talk offline. I'm so conflicted because I understand that we must keep up with the times. And so we have all of the reels, and we have all of the, all of the stuff, and, and more stuff, and, more, and more, more videos, and more content to create uh, to become relevant and remain relevant. But the danger is when we want to be relevant more than righteous. Y'all ain't talking to me. The, 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 the danger is when we leave the righteousness because we want to be famous. Oh, God, help me to preach this now. We, we want to be famous. And so you have an entourage that follows you. God, help me now. And they, and they, and they, and they capture your every move. And I, I've just not been able to catch up with that. Uh, because listen, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm an introvert. Uh, and, and this is the call of God that I can preach. Uh, but I'd rather be by myself with myself. Uh, so I, 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 I'm, I'm having a struggle uh, by them saying, hey, you need, to, you need to show this and you need to show that. Uh, and so now everybody, uh, everybody is wonderful. Uh, we got to see you get out the car. Uh, we got to see you eat your lunch. You ain't talking. Uh, we got to see you walk your dog. You ain't talking to me. Y'all ain't talking right here. We got to see every move that you make. And could it be ah, that the systems of this world ah, have caused us to be famous in our own eyes? Could it be that the devil is trying to get all eyes on you so they can take the focus off of God? But look at your neighbor and you ain't going to want to, they ain't going to want to hear this. Your flesh don't want to hear this, but your spirit needs to hear it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, ain't nobody famous but God. I'm talking to the right neighbor. Tell somebody, neighbor, ain't nobody a wonder but God. Tell them, get your eyes off of me, because I may fail you. Get your eyes off of me, because I may and put your eyes back on God. Somebody shout yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. This God of power. I'm almost done. This this God of fame. This this God of sensuality. This, this, this God of flesh. Oh, can I, can I tell you, church, in this consecration, you will never be able to satisfy your flesh. Look how y'all deep people looking at me. No, 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 no. If you give it an inch, it wants a mile. Y'all ain't talking. Uh, can, 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 come, come here. Come here, single women. Come here. Come here, single women. If, 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 if you start playing with your flesh, are uh, y'all deep now? You, you, you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Uh, 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 that's why, that's why you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta ignore those DMs at 10 o'clock at night. Y'all ain't talking now. Let me put my glasses on so I can look at you in your face. You gotta ignore those DMs at certain times of the night because your spirit may be strong, but your flesh is always weak. Y'all ain't talking. Uh, the, Paul says there's a war that's going on in my members. Uh, there's a battle between my spirit and my flesh. Y'all ain't talking over on this side. Uh, you you got to watch what you see. You got to watch what you hear. You see. You got to watch what you hear. You got to watch your conversations. Because the devil is looking for an opening in your flesh. Glory to God. He's looking to get you caught up oh, so they can say I knew it was nothing and I'm not going to tell you that you won't have a struggle and I'm not going to tell you that you won't fall but at 
least it's a struggle. But you better be careful when you're no longer struggling. You better be careful when you're no longer trying to live it. You better be careful when you don't want nobody to tell you you've gone too far. Somebody shout, Lord, help me to kill my flesh. Your flesh don't want you to say it, but somebody shout, Lord, help me to put my flesh on the altar. Yes, help me to crucify my flesh so that my spirit will live. Somebody shout, glory. I'm almost done. Oh, can I preach a little more? Oh, they said, Aaron, come make us gods <laughs> that shall go before us. In other words, my brother, God is not enough. And we want you to give us something to finish what he started. Uh, give us, give us something to finish what he started. Uh, and, and so he received their jewelry and their gold. Do you have that image? I don't know if you have it. He, he received the, the jewelry and the gold. And he began to fashion it with his tool until he made them a golden image and, and, and they begin to give the glory to another uh, that, that's when they got in trouble if you want to see another side of God start giving his glory Oh, God, start giving his glory to something else. Uh, when, when they did that, this upset God. You, you can tell that he got upset because he repeated it in verse number eight. He said, they have turned aside. I'm in the book. Quickly out of the way which I commanded them, and they have made a molten calf. He repeated what they said and have worshiped it and sacrificed. And they said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So now they have made this image. And now they begin to merge their worship. Mm -hmm. they, they begin... You got you to gotta, you gotta follow me in the book. They begin to merge their worship, my brother. Uh, the, the, Bible, the Bible says in verse 5 through 6, and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. Mm. And Aaron made proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Mm. And they rose up early on the morrow. And, and they begin to merge their worship. Mm. They, they begin to offer burnt offerings to the Lord. Hallelujah. They, they begin to offer peace offerings to the Lord. And then the Bible says that the merger began to happen because they sat down after bringing their offerings. And they began to drink and they rose up to play. Mm. Oh, God. They, they rose up early and they started out right. They, they started out singing Zion songs. But, but something happened when they tried to, through their drunken, immoral, sexual acts, they began to take their clothes off and and perform lewd and unbridled sexual acts as a part of their worship to their new God. And could it be that's the reason why our churches don't have the power that we used to? Because we have merged the sacred and the secular. Y'all ain't gonna talk, but I'm gonna preach it until I'm done. And we try to offer it up to a holy God. We sing holy, holy, holy while looking like hoochie mamas. Glory to God. We worship in here, but listen to all kind of ungodly music.
music in the t in our houses. We praise to wonderful click tracks in our churches, but when the convention is over, it turns into orgies, and everybody's looking for a hookup with not just the opposite sex, but the same sex. God, help me in here. We speak in tongues in here, but in the same tongue, you cuss somebody out, and you tell them, I dare you to judge me. Oh, while this is going on, oh, there's a merger, and God told me to tell the church, you can't offer me pollution. You can't offer me that which has been defamed. You can't give it to me the way you want it. You can't let me have it the way you feel like it. But you gotta be holy. Y'all ain't talking in this church. You gotta be righteous. You gotta be clean. Somebody look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, in 2022, tell them holiness is still right. You ain't talking to the right neighbor. Tell somebody, say, neighbor, in 2022, holiness, clean living, righteousness, godliness, pure conversations is still right. Why don't you throw your hand back and tell the Lord yes. Come on, tell the Lord yes. Come on, tell the Lord yes. Come on, tell the Lord yes. He still wants a yes. He still wants a yes. Open your mouth and shout, Lord, make me holy. I'm almost done, Bishop. Give me just a few more minutes. Oh, while this is going on, please hear me. Mm. Moses begins to intervene through intercession. God tells Moses, I'm done. And then he begins to say, these people that you brought. Wait a minute, God, wait. I, 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 didn't, I didn't have the power to send the plagues. I, I, didn't, I didn't send gnats, I didn't send flies. But God was fed up. And I know, I know grace is what it is. Oh, but we still serve a God. We still serve a God that will get fed up. Ah, he is fed up. And he says, listen, I'm going to kill all of them. They are stiff necked. That means they won't move to the left nor the right. I'm going to kill all of them. And I'll just raise you up as the father of all nations. I'll wipe every last one of them out. And Moses said, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on, God. Let me just remind you. Let me remind you that your name is on the line. Let, let, let me remind you that if you destroy this people, their enemy will say that you weren't possible. You weren't powerful enough to bring them into the promised land. Anytime God wanted to destroy them, Moses stood as an intercessor to intercept his decision. If you don't believe me, look at the next chapter. In the 33rd chapter, God said the same thing. He says, I'm going to send an angel with you, but I'm not going unless I should consume them in the way I'm in the book. Ah, and Moses said, wait a minute, God. If you don't go, don't take us up from here. But how will they know that we are your people except you go with us? Moses is an intercessor. And I know we've given it wonderful titles. Pastor, I know we've said that everybody's on the intercessor team and it's some elite team. But I want to tell you that God has called all of us to be intercessors intercessors and to stand in the gap and say God I know that judgment is coming but I'm going to stand right here until you turn it another way Hey, I wish I had 12 of y'all I know you said 
that you're going to destroy it, but God, I'm going to stand in the gap until you change your mind. Come here, intercessor. Is there anybody in this church that will say, I'm going to stand in the face of God, I feel like preaching, until he changes my children's life. I'm going to stand my children's life. I'm going to stand in the face of God until he changes my bloodline. I'm going to stand in the face of God until my son that's hooked on drugs come crying out, what must I do to be saved? Push somebody and say, name him. God, he'll change his mind. If you stand in the gap, tell somebody, he'll turn it around. If you stand in the gap, he'll turn it another way. If you stand in the gap, I know you get tired of praying and fasting, but God, he needs somebody that will say, Lord, here am I. Don't kill him. Don't destroy it. I'm done, everybody's standing. Uh, uh, this is what I love about Moses. He has a temper. He's conflicted. He loves him, but then he hates him. You know, he, he's a real leader. Remember the first time that God says to him, speak to the rock. He spoke in water came gushing out and then the second time God told him again speak to it but because he was dealing with ghetto people <laughs> he was dealing with people that that got on his nerves he smote the rock and in that instance what he was leading them to, he forfeited his own promise. God says to Moses, get down, for they have made unto them a God, and they have said, these be thy gods. Moses comes down from the mount and the Bible says when he saw that the people were unrestrained where is your restraint see that's the real Holy Ghost Oh, the, we, 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 we need to teach, and I know you do, but we need to teach this more. The real Holy Ghost ain't your tongues. The real Holy Ghost is your fruit. Y'all ain't talking still. It, it's, it, it's, it's that thing that can bridle your tongue and tell you, don't post that on Facebook. Oh, it's quiet now, y'all. It, it, it's quiet now. The, the, the real Holy Ghost is, is your restraint. And the Bible says that the people were without restraint. They were just doing whatever they wanted to do. And look at the church. We are without restraint. We're doing what we want to do, what we're grown enough to do. Without restraint. And when Moses saw what had happened, Moses stood up in the entrance of the camp and said, Whoever is on the Lord's side, come to me. In other words, he draws a line just straight down the middle he puts a line down 
And he says, there were two sides. There's a side of righteousness where it's going to cost you something. That there's a side of holiness where you're going to have to let go of what's familiar. He said, whoever is on the Lord's side, you're going to have to make a decision. The Lord told me to tell you tonight that it's time to pick a side. You can't straddle the fence. You can't be on his side when you need a miracle. And then you on the world's side when you want to be popular. You can't be on his side when you need a financial breakthrough. But Monday through Saturday, you dropping it like it's hot and stand down there till it's cold. You, you, have, to, you have to pick a side. Whose side are you on? Moses said, whoever's on the Lord's side, come to me. I, I want to find maybe 30 people that will come and come just stand with me and say, prophetess, I, I'm on the Lord's side. I, 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 want, I, I want you, I hope it's okay. I just want you to come and stand with me. Those who are on the Lord's side. Those who are making a commitment that I'm standing on the Lord's side. Can, can I tell you, just come on. Can I tell you, it's going to be tough to stand on his side. People going to call you deep. They're going to say, don't take all of that. They're going to say, you old bogey. They're going to say, we don't do church like that no more. We don't have to do that. We don't have to have all of those rules. But Moses makes them pick a side. And the Levites chose to side with God. But then there were others say you can have it we're going to do it our way and Moses made a commandment and told the Levites go through the camp with the sword and everybody that decided that they would stand in opposition to God they killed them they annihilated them it was no more I want to tell you today that there are only two sides. That there are only two sides. It's either God's or the world. And he told me to come during this holy consecration and I'm closing to tell you that being on his side requires a decision and action and separation. Being on the Lord's side, what does that mean, Pastor? It means that we believe in the scriptures. Being on the Lord's side, it means that we don't embrace sin. Mm. And, and why, why, Elder, should I be on the Lord's side? Because otherwise, there is only one alternative. Matthew 12 and 30 says, He that is not with me, is against me. Jesus makes it clear, church, that there is no middle ground in this. That there is no middle ground. You got to make a decision. There are two sides. Obedience to the commands of God or determination to place ourselves during this consecration or to stand on the world. Can I tell you that if you pick the opposite of God, your life is over. Oh, you may have some money, but you ain't living. 
you may have titles and you may have things and you may have a superficial joy, but you ain't living. Tonight, I'm drawing a line in the sand. And the Lord said, tell the church tonight, those of you that are online, he said, tell them to pick a side. You cannot worship a holy God while also worshiping the God of the world. God help me now. I, I know this is getting ready to get on some of your nerves, but I'm going to say it. You cannot worship a holy God while listening to the profane music of the world. Mm, y'all, I, 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 wasn't, I, wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't coming for a hand clap. I, I brought the witness of the Holy Ghost in me. You, you cannot be on God's side and, and, you, and you enjoy and you love the demonic sounds of Beyonce. God, see, y'all don't want the preacher to preach truth no more. You, you cannot, you cannot be on God's side and dibble and dabble in sage and crystals and horoscopes and zodiac signs and negative energy and vibes and manifesting stuff. Y'all ain't talking. You cannot be on God's side while connected to the world. He said, truth a side he said choose a side stop two timing me the quickest relationships I ended I ended with two timers because they couldn't make a decision and I was, I, I, was, I was not willing to settle for me and somebody else. If you're not standing, I want you to yonder by shot. I'm glad you got your shout out earlier. I'm glad you got your dance out. Because the Lord said tonight, I'm calling my church to decision time. The world is looking at us. And they are making a mockery over the things that were once sacred. It's sickening, it's nauseating to see how they make mockery of preachers and how they make jokes at worship leaders. And here you go laughing at it. It's sickening, but God said, there's a standard that he's raising again. And I may not be talking to everybody, but there is a remnant, oh bishop, there remains a remnant there remains a remnant that has not bowed down to the systems of this world and if you're saying tonight woman of God I feel this thing and I want to make a recommitment to stand on the Lord's side I want the devil and I want every imp to know tonight I want my family, I want my social media followers, I want my friends to know, make no mistake about it. I love you, but I'm not on your side. Glory to God. Hey, come, 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 church. Come on back to Jesus. Come on back to his will. Come on back to his way. Come on back to his power. Come on back to the Holy Ghost that burns on the inside. Come on, it's time to make a decision. You can't straddle the fence no more. You can't have one foot in. You can't have one foot out. He said, I would that you are hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, you're making me nauseated, and I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Come on, I want you to lift up your hands tonight. You're under arrest. You're under arrest. It's decision time for the church of the Lord Jesus. It's decision time. We got to go back to prayer. We got to go back to fasting. We got to go back to consecration. It's decision time. Why will you stand? Who's on the Lord's side? Why will you stand? Who's on his side? Who's on his side? Who still loves him? Who still desires to serve him? Who still desires to please him? I'm giving the world back their stuff. I'm giving the world back their music. I'm giving the world back their systems. I'm giving the world back their music. Yeah, come on, come on. Reach for it. Time I'm yours, Lord. Everything I have. Everything I've got. Everything I'm Come on, lift up your hands to a holy God. He's given us one more chance. He's given us one more.
but he's got to know who's on his side. He's going to use him, but he's got to know who's on his side. Come on, lift up your hands. Open up your mouth and tell him I'm on your side. Hey, come on. This ain't head knowledge. This ain't emotionalism. This is a decision that the enemy is going to try. This is a decision that they're going to try to offer you something to sell your soul. But you got to make a decision. For God I'll live and for God I'll die. Who's on the Lord's side? Come on, wave your hands if you're on his side. Who's on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side?
your neighbor and I want you to pray that God will strengthen them to stand through these last and evil days. Come on on the stage. Come on preachers. Grab somebody's hand and pray that God will strengthen her. Send strength tonight. Send strength in the sanctuary. Glory. Send strength tonight. Yet above my Neosha. Where we're weak, you're strong. Where we're weak, you're mighty. Come on, come on. Strengthen us, Lord. We can't do it by ourselves. Oh, we can't make it by ourselves. Oh, we can't live it by ourselves. But if you help us, 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 we'll do it your way. Come on, come on, come on, pray until you feel strength. Go with your neighbor, pray until you feel a shift. Pray out of your belly, pray until strongholds are broken. Pray until strongholds are broken. Pray. Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus, help us, Lord. We're on the altar. We're on the altar. We're on the altar. Come on, musicians, drop me. Yet of our money, Ocean. Okay. 
Joshua, this modern day David, Father, Yadaho, strengthen his resolve. Strengthen him. Strengthen him. Strengthen his innermost being. Strengthen him, Lord. For the task that you've given him, it is so great. Yando Bashi Yadaho. Sometimes it becomes so heavy, but God, we thank you for supernatural strength. I need to hear you praying, church. We thank you that you have him in a place where the enemy can't find him. I need to hear you praying. I said, I need to hear you praying. Oh, the enemy can't find him. The enemy can't find him. Cover him with your blood. Come on, church. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, shoot your voice like an arrow. Cover him with your blood. Not just the gift, but the man. Cover him. Cover him on his left and his right. Cover him from the front to the back. Cover him. No weapon formed against him shall prosper. And every tongue that rises shall be condemned. Cover him. Cover him. Cover him. Cover him. Cover his home. Cover his family. Cover his comings. Cover his going. Cover his itinerary. Cover him. Cover his mind. Homa Shita Baha. Cover his mind. Homa Shita Baha. Cover his mind. Homa. Cover his emotions. 
If you're on the Lord's side, I want to tell you that it's going to be tested. Every day there is something that's going to test your spirituality. But you got to stand firm. And say, I may not always get it right. But I'm going to always be standing on his side. If you're standing on the Lord's side at the count of three, I want you to make one step to my right and your left as a declaration that we are on the Lord's side and we will not be removed. At the count of three, every person that's making a decision, if this is not you tonight, don't move. But I decree and I declare that as you make this move, God is making some moves on your behalf. All it required was a decision. He said, now that I know that you're fully invested in it, all it requires is a decision. At the count of three, I want you to move one step, and I want you to shout Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus!